Welcome to Cairo, the Hassan Mustafa Indoor Sports Complex here in Egypt. City Oilers of Uganda come up against Al Ali. The Good luck. Well, there's the starting five. And of course, Kamran Malawash is in the starting five as usual. He's been outstanding, Q. He's led the way statistically and in terms of minutes on the floor for coach Karim Nesba. Coming into the starting line lineup is Robertson, Opong, Odosh, alongside Dane Miller Jr., Carl Pepper, and Patrick Rimbert, forming a great combination with Malawash in, that, in the center of the paint. But we need to see a little bit more from Dane Miller Jr. in this one, one field. Let's see now Alali of Egypt. Coach Chilby with the starting five there and some familiar faces again, Q. Well, tried and tested. It goes back to Saleh, I mean, Ahab Amin at the point guard position alongside Lions. Prince Ali back in to the starting lineup for this one after that wonderful display of long range shooting. Orabi and Mitchell Jr., they get the start for Coach Chilby. Well, let's take a look at uh, Ahab Amin and his last game. This is what he produced 45% from the field, 14 points in total, a couple of assists. Rebounds. Didn't spend too much time on court though, did he? Well, he spends about 20 minutes on court and gives great production for the time that he's on. They're talking about shortened rotations. When you have a look at Kaman Malawash, 16 and 19, just stuffing the stat sheet. He also had seven blocks in this one. It, it's what he does, his presence inside the paint. And 17 years old, leading the offense is a big, big load on his shoulders. Oh, come on. He's dealing with the pressure so well. He really is. And... All it takes is getting him a couple of touches, but this matchup will, will with Orabi inside the paint, is something to definitely keep an eye on. It's experience versus you. It's a special day for Alali of Egypt. They celebrate 127 years of existence. So uh, they'll be wanting to try and get a win out here today. Of course, Alali is a huge sporting club with a setup with, of course, uh, lots of different sports, including, you know, uh, football and tennis and, and uh, handball and volleyball. So it's a, it's a big institution that's known right across Africa. In fact, right around the world. Right around the world. Lions and the men in red get this game underway. Rabi the big man. An attempt to try and get a hold of the ball. Good pressure coming in from Dane Miller Jr. As uh, that man Mitchell Jr. draws a bit of attention. Steady enough for Alali on the first possession. Just having a look at what defensive schemes have been set up here by coach Karim Nesba. Amen. Getting the ball back out. Shot clock down to seven. Lions puts it up, and Mitchell does the business. Well, that nice connection between Lions and Mitchell just sliding in on the baseline. And up top is where he got it for that lob finish. Rimbert. With Cole Pepper. Senior. Down into the corner he goes. Malawash in possession. Or Rabi Malawash. There was uh, a lot of talk about this matchup in the first encounter. Well, it's going to be very much taking the headlines today as well, Q. Well, a beautiful first move for Malouas. Not many can stop that, especially given his size. Prince Ali just faking and then going, but he's short on his shot. Picked up by Malouas. Miller Jr. Uh, picks it up. Well, that's really good work to try and keep... Uh, his defender at bay, working his socks off on a big, uh, big way, Opong. Goes out wide, and a long-range shot that just goes off the other side of the medal. Rembert, Rembert, out wide. Cole Pepper, senior. Surveyed, marshaled there by that man, Prince Ali. There's a foul that's been committed by Mitchell Jr. there on, on Cole Pepper, senior. Taking a lot more time on each position. They're not looking as rushed as they have in the previous three encounters. The City Oilers initially to start out, they are being allowed to, to find defeat. And just have a look at that Lions to Mitchell connection. Up top. And nice smooth finish from Mitchell. First shots from the free throw line here for the. City Oilers. This one's good. 15 points Carl Pepper had in their first outing against Al Ali. He'll try and build a performance or put together a performance like that. Didn't see too much time in the last outing for the City Oilers. Uh, earning his spot right back in the starting lineup. We'll see how that has impacted it. 
Came in, down into the corner, and picked up by Lyons. Lyons, fine acquisition here for Alili. Prince Ali picks it up. Amin goes for a three shot. It's a long range shot that doesn't get its uh, ideal range. Rembert picks it up. Thanks to Cameron uh, Malouash. Rembert, Rembert tries to float it up. That's nicely done. And he did that in his first uh, in, the, in his first couple of games. But then he just took his finger off the throttle a little bit for the game for game three. Well, he looks so good coming downhill, especially with the utilization of that double screen. And he gets a floater finish. It's a good couple of positions to start out. Oilers in control. But they left Lyons to his own devices and then a nice little pass to Arami. Unable to sink that. Mitchell Jr. flings it back out. Amin and the shot clock is oh. down to zero. But Amin hits the big three. Big three beating the buzzer. That was almost a logo three. That was from way, way downtown. Rembert. He's, he's showing us the uh, the guile that he had in in the opening couple of games when he was like putting together some good uh, personal performances, 20 points. Just have a look at that, big time! Wow, look at look where he is, ridiculous. But just the step inside the logo, and maybe if the circle was a little bit bigger, we would have had our first <laughs> real logo three. It'll, it'll happen. It'll happen soon. But 21 points he had opening card. You're talking about. This was their first game, and that's where we really got excited about what Rembert can offer. And again, we'll be looking to replicate that. Seems to like the matchups on the floor. Well, he's, uh, he, he, he's, I think he's enjoying playing against Alali. That's what it, that's what the scenario is. They say get more points, and it's a uh, three-point lead here for the City Oilers from Uganda. Amen. Wanders down, down the flank. Nicely put into the path of Arabi. Doesn't manage to get hold of the ball, and uh, just a little bit of contact there by Dane Miller Jr. on Arabi. That's going to be the second foul, and Dane Miller Jr. second team foul. There's a lot of juniors and seniors on the court on the floor today, but there's one, you know, guy who's just—he's younger than a junior, isn't he? Malawash. But he's just stand out big time. A junior by name, but not junior by performance on the floor. Ah, the attempted tip in there by Rabi goes to the wrong side. Picked up by Cole Pepper. Cole Pepper goes for three. Just off target. So Junior picks it up. Over the top, it goes to Arabi. Arabi, lovely, lovely touch there. The pass was sublime. That was pinpoint. Precision on the pass and Arabi he finishes close range comfortably. That's four P's that is Q. <laughs> Stunning. They get possession back over on that far side. Dave Miller Jr. A little bit of frustration there from the uh, from Lions and Amen. Uh, we also allowed a little bit of gradual improvement inside the booth. Inside the booth. <laughs> Not just inside the paint. I like it. Here we go, back out with Rembert in possession. Opong looking to try and find a little bit of space. It opens up for him. It's a blow. Oh, he nearly has good use of the, the glass. Goes again. He puts it into the hands of Malawash. Malawash trying to make his way out. Mitchell Jr. doing some special smuggling maneuver there. Well, that shows that they've been watching the tape as he goes away on the fadeaway. That's excellent timing from Mitchell who comes in on the help. And they'll deny Malawash the opportunity on this possession. Hey, ho hopefully it won't dent his uh, confidence. I'm sure it won't, Dave Miller Jr. Just uh, around the outside, shot clock down to two. Oh, put it in there. Malawash showing us what he can do from distance. Makes a connection. That's his third three in the four games. And if he finds his touch, he can knock down those long range shots. We see, him, we see him in training, we see him what he's capable of doing. There's a traveling call going against Prince Ali. We've got a four point lead here. There's the, uh, the bench there with uh, Keju, of course, and Gendi, and uh, the young Sefeldin Hindawi, who's come through the NBA Academy, playing with the likes of Malawash, of course. Yeah, he's in limited time, but definitely a talent on the bench. Rembert trying to get the ball back out, makes a bad pass there, and Eamon will just finish this off. 
normally, but he does on this occasion. A little bit overcooked on the finger touch. Uh, you've got to be very aware of the presence of lurking Marawash and Eamon just try to get that in, rush the layup. Yeah, that is how, when you talk about changing shots on the defensive end, it doesn't show up on the stat sheet. That's, that's the impact of Marawash. Him coming down, Eamon just really aware. I mean, close the layup. And it's, it's, it's complicated because I think that he is so athletic and he's, he's, his presence at both ends of the court. There's always a figure behind you casting a shadow, making it very complicated. And if he's chasing and hunting you down, it's going to be super complicated, right? The Lions picks up a second and you're absolutely right. But it says his athleticism and length, you, you have to be aware of his presence in the paint. It's kind of, it's safe to score points when he's up on the other side of the court, basically. But uh, he gets the chance to go for points now from the free throw line. He picked up seven blocks in the, in the last outing. And that is a VAL high. Hey, listen, he's already up to, what, six points? Another chance to score from the free throw line. City Oilers with the very dangerous Tama Malawash doing the business. Just over five minutes to go in this first quarter. We see many teams get the better of Alali a little bit, you know, nudge ahead as we see a long range shot that's come off the side, taken safely away by Robinson O'Pont. Rembert down into the corner, De Miller Jr. back to Rembert, flung out to De Miller Jr. He's going to go alone, swatted away by that man, Orabi. Absolutely cleared out from Orabi. He goes with the right hand into the big frame of Arabi and is swatted away with disdain. Uh, you want to find out if the password was working, the uh, firewall clears that one out. Ooh, bring it on. Trespassing will be, will result in prosecution. Here we go. It's 13-7 uh, and we'll be back after a small break. We're back on the floor. City Oilers lead uh, Alali 13-7. It's the Ugandan team who have found themselves in the uh, driving seat in the early stages of this encounter. Opong pits it up, goes for a mid-range two, potentially no. Malawash will have the ball in hand. Now he's trying to get himself away from Arabi. Goes up high. Arabi does a brilliant job. Opong, oh, nicely done from Opong. Bring it on. Awareness on the baseline. As, again, there's some great defense from Arabi on, on the... One on one play against Malawash, but right there to clean up is a punk. Eight point lead, field goals, three from nine, three from 11 for the Egyptian champions. Prince Ali. Ali goes up, he got a mid range two as well. Fine score there for that man who was devastatingly good in the last outing. He was fantastic down the stretch, big time shot making in the fourth quarter. And a big reason why they picked up that win against Al Ali Libya. 99-76 was the win against the Oilers in their uh, first encounter of the two. Oh wow, Cold Pepper! That was special. They are playing some really good offense right now, functioning at a hundred percent. Hey, listen, training practice makes perfect, and this is Arabi going up against Malawash. Is he going to get past him? Oh, there's a traveling call going against him. He, 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 he rammed himself up against the big man, Malawash, who was, who was, who wasn't moving. He wasn't moving, and Arabi won't have come up against too many seven oh, guys his height, seven two centers that he's got to consider different moves against, and that's, that's what can often happen. Rembeck, he's Zawi, the youngster, comes on, just 19 years of age. Cole Pepper is a shift in different players. Cole Pepper trying to find his way, gets the ball down. Kizawi gets a touch, and it will be the Oilers who will have possession again. Kizawi is playing the pass, and they just couldn't hold on to the pass. It's a good solid start for Karim Nesbaum. You know, it's good to see him, like, you know, still trying to find solutions to try and break down their opponents despite losing three. Opong. Wow, that's great work, isn't it? It has to come, and Eamon doing sensationally well, but they just couldn't keep hold of the ball down on the ground. A little bit frustrating now, I must admit, for Nasser. Trying to keep it alive, just chasing it down. Nasser couldn't keep it in play. Well, Pepper Senior. Shot top down to three. You gotta go for the shot. You gotta go for the shot. You it's okay. No, you can't go for that because he was the first player to touch the ball. So uh, they get possession. 
couldn't create the separation. That's great defensive possession. Some pressure there on Culpepper, forcing the turnover. And already got a change happening for the City Oilers. You can see that Tony Dreleb is going to come on. A little bit of a grimace from Culpepper after that shot. And Substitution now. He heads off. Dreleb does come in. That's a difficult task of trying to deal with. Amen. Not easy. Zowie. Nasser, Nasser, Nasser around the outside trying to find some space. Billy gets the ball to Amen. Goes off the top and right over the back. Rembert picks it up. Rembert tries to get past Kizawi down into the corner. Looking for options. Dane Miller Jr. Malawash is staying clear of the danger as that man, Dave Miller Jr., just goes in and out. A nice move from Dave Miller Jr., just couldn't get that finish. Gizawi, Boulevard opening up. Passes it back out to Amin, Amin. Around the outside, Bashir comes up. And I think there's going to be a score and also a walk up to the line. We have Amin gets inside the paint. He's been trying his luck from the perimeter this time. Crosses over, gets inside, extends the arm, man, gets the finish. A very, a very subtle but smooth touch there from that man, I mean, he is he's a classy player, the player from Alexandria. Able to switch up speed, his athleticism is electric, and here he is averting the three-point play. When he came back from the States uh, after spending um, some time over the other side of the pond, he was being serenaded by Zamalek and Alali, that uh, decided to go for Alali rather than the city rivals. Foul being committed there. Rembev working really hard, drawing attention. Gizawi picks up the foul. Contact on the shot that's going to see Rembev go to the free throw line. If they are in the penalties also. Fouls starting to accumulate. Hey, Characteristic low scoring first quarter for Al Ali, but City Oilers should take credit because of the work they've done on the defensive end and also got a lot of patience and control. There's influencer Alicia Yanakoni, who's uh, one of many influencers who are here tonight here in the Hassan Mustafa Sports Ooh. Arena. Al Ali games do seem to attract a diverse crowd, and it, the home team does does bring a show. Yeah, absolutely. Nineteen twelve, seven point lead. Al Ali picking up possession. Mitchell Junior, Amen. Zawi. Very impressed by Gizawi and what he's bringing to this Alali performance. Malawash trying to oh, deal God. with uh, Rabi, and that's um, trying to call for the foul as well, but it's fallen on deaf ears. He tries to anticipate the contact and he goes to ground, but sometimes I think I just rather see them both go at each other and, and the, the arm extension up. But that time the referees let it go and Rabi finishes close range. There's Bashir, Bashir. I'm very impressed with what Bashir brings this game. That nearly goes in. And of course, if Malawesh gets hold of the ball, then they're in a good position. But it's defended well there by Alali. who have a chance to try and reduce the arrears. Amin goes up. Fine score indeed. Oh, it's uh, up to 17 points for Alali now with 1.31 left on the clock. And the timeout, tar timeout called by Karim Nesba. Again, he makes the right read. No defender steps up, but... Amen steps up for three from the top of the key and line drive. Nothing but net. And it's a two point game. Nine points for here, but I mean, he's a floor general and they really do go to him quite a bit. 
especially when in high pressure situations he likes taking responsibility I, I think that sometimes they're you know they're a little bit reluctant to put him out onto the court because they know that there's other players who need to come to the fore it's just like coach Chulabay spoke before you got a bench you got 12 you got potentially 13 players they can all come on and do do their stuff as we take a look at the stats well nine points they have I mean alongside for the four is three rebounds or Abby's had four points on the other side some balanced scoring Malawash still leading the way with seven points and four boards remember six points and Carl Pepper was on the bench now four points and a single rebound 19-17 131 left Alali clambering back you know we got a big crowd here now and it's uh, they're enjoying themselves in a big way of course lots of Alali supporters here on you know with the home court advantage here in this wonderful arena that is the Hassan Mustafa Sports Arena it's a fantastic facility and air condition that takes care of everything and so many different options in terms of uh, practice court the, there's just a lot going on love it Q bring it on Culpepper Senior big pass into Bashir there he goes and the, 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 the attempted soft touch there just to bring it over uh, he wins the ball back look that's what he's really good at tries to get himself up that's a great score yeah. uh, physical hard believes gets the points you like to see that sort of character fighting spirit he, 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 he may have blew the layup but he goes ahead and steals the ball and gets the finish yeah because he's committed to the cause in a big way oh Rabi oh Rabi oh Rabi and Malawash will pick up his first foul it appears Orabi is enjoying the matchup the scream after he gets the score a chance to, to go to work at this time he goes over the left shoulder and gets right by Malawash and he finishes that soft touch of his yeah it's interesting hearing him uh, the, the interview after the last LLE win and, and, and just hearing how he talks about the matchups and yeah it's good to have some you know guys the same size as me you know I'm used to the physical stuff but you know the fact is that he's coming up against a, a young guy who is tormenting him a little bit but he's not being over he's out wrestled is he now nah, he's a very skillful big is a rugby. oh stunning score there finally we got James O'Kella putting himself on the scoreboard we can talk about a skillful big O'Kello can certainly hold his own as well yeah he's helped uh He's helped the City Oilers win seven national titles. The third stint playing for the City Oilers. So uh, lots of experience. And I think that he was also uh, uh, the Ugandan Player of the Year, the Writers Player of the Year uh, a couple of years ago as well. And the Ugandan International. Been at the Zone 5 so Champs in, in 17 and 18. And his stepbrother is Philip Wokrash, who's, uh, who's actually uh, a Ugandan national rugby player they both wear 15. you got all the facts today Robbie. all the facts and the figures but he doesn't have 15 on his back because it's Bashir who's who took it away from him this for the Nile conference this time it's a great score look at that that is the way to do it Abu Nasser again scribe the right read and really great finish underneath up and under and then Pepper Senior just at the back. Malawas waiting. Down in the flanks, he goes up for a shot that doesn't fall. Gardner gets his first moments, and that's the end of this uh, first quarter. And 23 21, the City Oilers are ahead. There's still a lot of basketball to be played, but that's a good position for Karim Nesba. Let's see what they can do when we come out of this uh, break. And into the second quarter. 23 21, the City Oilers lead Alalini. Welcome back to the floor here in Cairo, Egypt. You can see that uh, there's a lot of interest around this encounter. The City Oilers two points ahead of Alali. And uh, we're just about to start the, the second quarter. Q, impressive start for the City Oilers. Now they've got to really understand how to try and stay ahead against a team that is so talented as Alali. Alali will continue to execute. They, they, they know how to grind out a win and fight back. We saw that because City Oilers got out to a seven point lead and then it, they were reined in. But 
good, good op opening quarter for Coach Karim Nesba. The City Oilers will be looking to try and build on it here in the second. It's all about building, it's all about building, and it's all about trying to stay ahead. 68-79, they lost against Alani Libya, but what a brilliant battle they provided us with as they go in search of their first win. Kulpe Senior in possession here. Shot clock down to seven. Here is that man at your lever, drops it into the path. Oh, that's nearly under and up there from that man, James Okello. Picked up, and Gizawi. Nasser goes up, he goes down as well. And he does draw attention. Foul going against Alali. He's already showcased how skillful he is, finishing close to the rim and out, going across. Trileba gets him up in there a little bit early, draws the contact, chance at the charity strike. What I'm impressed with is there's the fast and furious way in which Alali can just switch. You know, you've got a team that can switch just like that, and it, they can climb it back and they go on scoring runs, and it's just impressive, isn't it? Impressive as Arabi taps that in, he has a look at Malawash just after the score and you can bet the matchup is definitely on on the interior. Seven points for Malawash, eight for Orabi as uh, the attempt going high off the glass there coming from Bashir doesn't fall. Gizawi down into the corner, Elgendi coming on. All right, it's the, it's the ghost-like moves of Elgendi that catches us all at. He is so elusive and sneaky as the shot doesn't fall for that man, Nasser. Cole Pepper Senior dodges a rabbi, looking for the big man, goes up for three. Patrick Gardner, two giants on court for Alali. It's a couple of scoreless possessions, but Alali will be happier because of the open shot off, the, off of open play. Cole Pepper trying to create by himself. Kizawi playing very mature basketball. Cole Pepper will. Tried to sneak that out of the out of Nasser's possession, didn't happen. Look at that, it's a tap on the arm. Trying to wrestle it away, he gets a touch on and now Bashir, Andrew Leber off. It's Miller Jr. and Rembert back in. I think these are the five that he really wants to have, you know, working the mechanics and trying to engineer themselves into a good place. But uh, uh, Alali moving ahead for um, by one point with Gendi. With Gendi. Well, Gendi, no floater on this occasion. Dane Miller Jr. gets a touch. Patrick Gardner doesn't manage to get the shot. And uh, Nasser flies off Malawash. Rembe for three. Nasser picks it up. It's a cold period for the Oilers on the offensive end. And interestingly, Alali have gone big with Keju and Gardner on the floor. Alali getting a little bit of uh, time, a little bit of rest time. Gandhi over the top, El Gandhi unable to sink that. A, bit, a, a rare floater that doesn't find its final destination. Miller Jr. unable to get the points, but he does draw a foul. Right. Good work from Dave Miller Jr. That's what you want from a bit more of that. You know, the swashbuckling style of driving into the paint. Players will go towards him because he's he's quite lanky, but he's but he's quite agile. Well, on, his, on this team is his second in terms of foul drawn, just behind Malawas. He does prove a difficult cover, and because of his physical style of play, is prone to picking up fouls from the defense. Struggled though from the free throw line. Dane Miller Jr. throughout this competition. 37% after the first three games. Kane Nesbach talking with Patrick Rembert just to uh, give a little bit of extra advice before they get moving once again. Uh, we're back square at 24 apiece. 7.42 left. Nearly uh, dropped. Ball and lost ball there from Gizawi. Rembert putting pressure on Gizawi. Shot clock down to nine. Nasser De Miller Jr. Patrick Garner trying to find space. Gizawi goes around the outside. It's flung wildly and it's gone out of play. Good pressure. Pressure 
defensive play there from the City Oilers. They, they took away a, a couple of looks in different areas. Excellent ball pressure, excellent coverage, and the result is a turnover. Titus coming on. Remember, there you go, that's the moment that uh, Patrick Gardner just couldn't keep the ball in play. Remember, it's an important moment for them to get points. It's Miller Jr. trying to deal with El Gendi. Around the back it goes. Chucks it out to Titus. Titus, uh, there's a travelling call. Flustered again at the other end, quite similar to what we just saw. Except this time, it's not off ball movement. It's Dame Miller Jr. trying to create, see if he can draw some defence. Kicks out to Odeke when he doesn't get the look that he wants, and Odeke can miss the travel. Kizawi, Nasser. Cold Pepper just keeping an eye on him, keeping tabs on him. Kizawi drops into the paint. Kaz unable to get the score. That's good work there from Sauron. He gets the, the second touch, the second shot is good. Just trying to pick up the foul inside Odeke. Again, goes to ground a little bit too early, too easy, and allows Keju an easy two. And it's been tough going for the Sydney Oilers here to start out the second quarter. They've got to find some of that magic that they had in the first. 24-26 it is, Alali push ahead. We'll take a moment and we'll be back. Well, the fans are having a fantastic time here in Cairo and the Nile Conference in full swing. This is uh, four games for these two teams. City Oilers still looking for their first win here in Egypt. Two points behind Alali. As Dame Miller Jr. goes for a big bucket, finally gets his range. It's a big moment for him. Yeah, you very rarely see him con continue to take from three, but that's an important shot for Dame Miller Jr. Maybe it sparks him on the offensive end. El Gendi, El Gendi going out wide. Patrick Gardner for his big bucket. Comes back off the metal. Rembe gets rid of El Gendi down into the corner. Is Culpepper Senior. No way down towards the baseline. Yes, there is. He flings it back out. Malawash for a big three. Doesn't fall and it's been made safe by Gizawi. Down to Patrick Gardner. Oh, my word. Oh, my word. The Gardner's at work. What an amazing connection with Gizawi. It's first of all the the recognition to lob it up there and then the skill from Gardner to get the finish. One point lead, Miller Jr. goes again. Oh, oh! put it in there. Malawash Mania is back. Great timing and leads the BAL in second chance points and you get a reason and you get to see why. Oh, the floater over the top. El Gendi does what he does every time. Soft touch over the top, it goes, love it. Great score from Al Gindi. Rembet drops it into the path of Titus. Dane Miller Jr., he's hit a three, he's got a little bit of space, no, he's not gonna go. Rembet, around Gizawi, drops one over the top, gets knocked off his feet, back up. Gizawi takes it into an attacking position. Boy, I don't know why he didn't go for that. Oh, get out of there! Malawa says no! He accessed, absolutely denied on this one. And you have a look at the work from Gazal. He's trying to re recognize his options. He throws up and Gardner right there on the finish. That's a long connection that lands. And here's a look at Malawash's pain presence and pain protection. El Gendi, El Gendi, ghosting into the paint. Out wide for Patrick Gardner. Oh, it's been stolen. Dave Miller Jr. Is it going to be a dunk? Yes, it is. Dave Miller Jr. Well, Big scoring, Dane Miller Jr. This might be Miller time for him as he starts to find his flow on the offensive end. Dunking Dane. Gendy. Oh, look at El Gendy. Nearly gets his points, does draw the foul. Just a magician, El Gendy. He's so full of guile when he's working with the ball. You have to kind of pick your poison and he really can't break down the defense in a lot of ways. Another look at Dane Miller Jr. Air traffic control has cleared him for takeoff. I think he had a glass of rocket fuel before he started the game today. Brilliant. Again, he gets number one. Love the crowd here today. 
Ooh, they're loving what's going on here as well. Big score, we're even again. And we have him in of Alexandria. Watches on from the bench. He'll come back on a little bit later on. Rembert. Cold Pepper Senior. Back to Rembert. Dane Miller Jr. Malawash picks it up. Keju. Keju into the hands of the Titans. He can't do anything with it. Just in the way. And Nasser. Oh, stay out of there. That is brilliant from Cold Pepper Senior. Swatting away the ball. Look at this. Rembert. Rembert. Get it in. Oh, Gallo. Malawash can't dunk it down. And it's picked up by El Gendi. This is madness. Who's going to get the score? Over the top, Patrick Gardner. Oh, the soft touch. I can do that easily. It brings a crazy sequence of play to an end. And Gardner finally just uh, bringing some calm to four. That was really frenetic passage. Miller Jr. And uh, he... Kazawi's going to get the foul going against him that's foul number two let's just have a look at this again okay all right get it in there Malawash big statement dunk there he's always in the right position to slam it down yeah he's presence inside and also good hands and then you have to add the length and, and ability to finish and that's why he leads the BAL in second chance points and offensive rebounds. Nine points there. Will he be the first person that gets a double figures or will it be Orabi or Amen? Well, those two players that I mentioned are on the bench, but Malawash is still here. Opong down into the paint. Dave Miller Jr. trying to get past that man. Kedju! Great score from Miller Jr. He might be the player to move up into double figures. He's at eight. All right. He has definitely got a spring in his step here in the second quarter. That look in his eye. Oh, he's been stolen. And he's off again, Dane Miller Jr. on fire. And he just has the ball, just flies out of his hands. Keju, Keju, through the middle. Whoa! Both players losing the ball. But, well, that I think you, you have to credit, Renberg. What he did was almost sell, understanding that Keju was looking to try and pass the ball out, and it caused him to hesitate and lose possession on it. Renberg down into the corner. Here he is, Opong. Lying back out into the hands of Rembert. Opong for three. Ooh, just come back out. Kizawi doesn't have anybody racing up court. But he's got El Gendi who might go for a long range shot from here. You just never know. What will he do? It's as though he's wearing a, a an invisible cloak that makes him invisible. It's impressive. He just he does ghost between defenders, Q. He is so difficult to cover. Shot clock down to nine. Back out. Swung out to Rembert. Tries to get rid of El Gendi. Oh, Tom going up now. Oh! Bring it on. A massive three-pointer there from that man, Robinson. Opar. Well, the shot clock winding down. They were searching for a shot against this zone. And that was a tough make from Robinson Opar. El Gendi. El Gendi still going, isn't he? Get out of there, says that man. Malawash, but El Gendi gets his goods. It shows you how good he is on the offensive. And even with the arm of Malawash attacking him, he still has the poise and control to get the finish. We've got 1.30 left on the clock. It's a one-point game. This is exactly where Kari Nesba and his City Oilers want to be. The Ugandan representatives. Pope Epicenia, big three. Malawash trying to get the rebound. Keju makes contact on Malawash, and he will pick up his second foul. I was trying to clear the ball out to deny Malawash the opportunity to get control of the basketball, but he'll pick up a foul. Just his first foul. Second team foul. Second foul. Yamakawi Keju. Here we go. Rembert. Opong down into the corner. Dame Miller Jr. He's on fire. He's on fire. But he can't get that shot, but this man can. Malawash making the rebound. Safe as houses. Dame Miller Jr. setting it up. First Malawash up to 11 points. Your, your question is answered. First play into double figures is come on, Malawash. Lions, Prince Ali back on the floor. And 47 seconds remaining here in this first half. Lions, Lions, stay out of there. 
Malawas swats it away. Cole Pepper Senior tries to have the ball. Take it away, and Gendi, El Gendi commits the foul. you got to have that arc adjustment, especially when Malawash is lurking in the paint. This one doesn't adjust for the Malawash factor, and it gets cleared out of the paint. Hey, look, he's on eight rebounds already, so the double-double's just around the corner as uh, Opong picks the ball up. That's nicely done. Oh, he's just a little bit too far away from uh, his comfort zone as Prince Ali picks the ball up. Quick transition. Oh, there's a battle there, and they don't manage to get the score. And it's now the City Oilers with Rembert just calming things down marginally. But he'll hold for the final shot of the half. They want to be in control. And there's the matchup. Malawash trying to get past Keju. Oh, he tries to deal with it. Keju standing firm. Lions are screaming for the ball over there. Gendi goes up for three, doesn't fall. And how about this? The City Oilers have led at the end of the first quarter. They've led at the end of the second. They have a three-point lead. Interesting way to go. Interesting way to go. I don't like what they did on that last position. They, they gave al a chance, but they scoreboard still in their favor, and there's a lot that they can build on going into the second half. Let's take a break. We'll be back with the highlights in a few moments. We're back. The players are on the cusp of a return within the, the minute as we prepare ourselves for the second half of this riveting showdown. And we've had a riveting showdown earlier on. 96-93, we saw Bangi beat Alali Libya. Let's take a look at these two wonderful players that we've been watching earlier in the first half. Well, we had a chat about the, the ability of Malawash and uh, the floor leading two different kinds of players. The, uh, a guard who leads from the front and a point man that you got to get touches to inside the paint. The second half, however, will offer different prospects for both teams. And with, depending on the adjustments made on the floor, we're going to see Coach Jube perhaps go a little bit deeper into his rotation. Coach Karim Nesba trying to unlock more aspects of the City Oilers offense. And Dave Miller Jr., I believe, will have a big role to play in, in terms of that. But leading the way there, come on, Malawas. Amen. will start with uh, Gizawi, Gardner, Mitchell Jr. and Orabi. With uh, Culpepper Senior, Malawash, Dane Miller Jr., Rembe, and Opong. Mitchell Jr., ball in hands, gets it going. The third quarter, the second half. Call it what you like. We know that it's going to be rammed with so much excitement that we're going to be flying off our chairs at one point. Q. This is fantastic. Long range shot going in. Oh, it comes off the side of the backboard. Gets another chance. Aim in. Gardner tries to get it. Malawash finally makes it safe. Well, we've seen that that's a spot that he really enjoys the, the corner three. Surprised that that didn't go in for Amin. Picks up. Going to go high off the. Glass, Gardner gets it out as an opportunity. They're queuing up. Who's going to take it? Well, it's Mitchell Jr. Malawash, unfortunately, gets picked out for goal 10 in the points. Will count. And he has his double-double. That 10th rebound there was obviously the uh, the double-double that we were waiting for. It's finally happened for Cameron Malawash. Right around his average. Uh, 10, 12 boards and 20 points, so he's still got some work to do, and I'm pretty sure we'll see him build on that performance. Opong, Robinson Opong, in possession, into the hands of Malawash. Malawash up against Orabi. Orabi trying to get his hands on it. But is there any way through? Tries to go up high, goes down, but it doesn't go in. Mitchell Jr. down into the corner. Gardner for a long range three. Oh, it just rolls back out. Who's there? Eamon, of course. Gardner drops oh. it in for Orabi. Orabi gets fouled by Opong. Well, the struggles from the three-point line continue for this al Ali team. They're now three of, two of 16 from the outside, but they, they, they do make up with a look at Orabi and the foul from Opong. And gonna go make him earn it from the free throw line. No no easy twos being given up here inside. No, nothing at all, right? I mean, you know, we, we did expect tight defense. Jim Karim Nesbar said, look guys, you know, we've got to, uh, we've got to get ready 
for the onslaught that Al Ali will pro provide us with in the second half. That's when they come to their fore. They're okay, like sort of, you know, chipping away and staying behind going into the break. But when they come back out, you know where they are. They're going to go for straight for the, you know, straight for the heart. You have to anticipate a third quarter run. Well, one of these teams is going to go on a run, and it's likely Al Ali. Oh, get out of there, Robbie! Just swatting away the ball. Run back, unable to get it. Amen slows it down and then gives it to Gizawi. Gizawi for three. Finally, he finds his range and finds one from the perimeter for Al Ali. It's a massive score that is for that ever dangerous man, Kizawi, who's just coming to life. Wonderful player, of course, and uh, young uh, with a great future ahead of him. 19, Culpepper Senior mid range two. It's a fine score as well, and that's a good way to hit back. It's a one point game. I think this is where Coach Philby likes to accelerate, isn't he? He likes to see his players really rip into their opponents, start of the third. But well, we've seen it start of the third also, late in the third. Yes. And the middle of the third, and anywhere in the third. <laughs> It's been picked up. Oh, that's gone out of play. Well, wild pass, and uh, finally, it's going to be uh, City Oilers who get possession back. Culpepper Senior. Coach Toby watches on. Not getting everything his own way. Maluash. Opong for three. Big long range shot. It just uh, goes up, and uh, Dane Miller Jr. unable to get his hands on that. Gardner's doing the business, and Mitchell Jr. puts it in the path of Orabi. Orabi with a wonderful little uh, drop over the top there to make sure that the points are sunk. Nice timing on the pass, and he gets Orabi, who really has been playing. Oh, oh. Malawash! Well, he gets fouled by Orabi, there's no doubt about that. <laughs> Afterwards, we have to see if the points count because the whistle was blown before. Absolutely counts as the late foul. Orabi creates the contact. And Manawash does not need a second chance opportunity to throw it down that close to the, to the rim. I think the ball came back down on his head as well. It was like a full deal, but look what it means to the man. Power statement. 15 points, 14 now. And then we're back level at 43 points apiece. Gizawi, fast. Loves, to, loves the quick transition. Ayo, excellent opportunity. Culpepper Senior goes up. Does he get fouled? No, he doesn't. Good defensive play from Amin. Doesn't commit too much. No call there. Looking for it. But I'll lead the other way. Gardner, Gardner, get out of there. Second goal, then call now. Watch. Malawash the ball on the downward path. Gardner flips that one close by and that clear downward path. Well, they still nudge it themselves ahead, but all credit to the City Oilers. They are keeping them in arm's reach and just not letting them go and do what they want to do. The execution absolutely matters against the defending champions. Malawash. High off the glass, great score there for Malawash. He's up to 16 points and he's the uh, outright leader, extending his tally. They continue to go to him, he continues to play with a lot of perseverance. Orabi, Gardner, the big man, the big man queuing up, that's love. Isn't that a, a soft touch going high over the top, just dropping it over. He liked the matchup, of course, just looking up over Miller Jr. and he gets the score. Miller Jr. going through the middle, chucks it out to Culpepper Senior, back into the path of Dane Miller Jr. He draws a lot of attention from Amen, who picks up another foul, and that will be his second of the night. He drew all three defenders that were close by, and unfortunately for Amen Jr., he, Amen picks up the foul. And again, I'm going to talk about the, the struggles of uh, Dane Miller Jr. from the future line because they've been tangible and visible. And now you've just cursed yourself. Blessing, I told you, there's the other side to it. There's the positive. He's actually listened. No, but you, you can see that he, he knows what he hasn't done and what he's trying to do. So you can understand. This is to get double figures. And he's up to double figures, the second player for the City Oilers. 10, six behind Malawash, all level again. 
Mitchell Julia, Upong keeping an eye on him. Ugandan international. Gardner picks it up, tries to drop it into the path of Orabi. Orabi! A statement dunk of his own. Orabi gets the service that he wants and this time gets his own back. Cole Pepper gives the ball away to Amin. Amin is there and Amin will not stop himself from delivering. Brilliant score. Amin, the steal, sensational. Uh, he thought about the dunk. I think he even tried for the dunk, but he still got the finish. Malawash, Mitchell Jr. leans into him. Well, that's great work from Mitchell Jr. He wasn't allowing him to get past. Yeah, that's just experience on the defensive end. And then look at the work from, I mean, and he did. Uh, uh, the question is, did he try and dunk it or did he not? I think he did. Listen, he was very sneaky, wasn't it? He's going up. Uh, no, he, he, was, he, was, he, was, he was drifting away, so I don't think it would have been too risky, I think. Most importantly, got the sport. That's all that matters. Here's Gardner. Gardner doing well. Over the top he goes to Dave Miller Jr. Just there, just lofting it with a sensational little touch there. The execution again in the third. It just seems to ramp up for Al Ali. Six point lead and uh, a temporary drought of points here for City Oilers. This is the key, this is the time. And, uh, Frustration here once again. I think it's uh, Malawash coming up against Arabi and giving away the ball. Anyway, 47-53 is the uh, the lead, six points, and a timeout's being called. We'll take a small break, and we'll be back in a moment. Yeah, welcome back to the Hassan Mustafa Sports Arena. Ihab Amin. He is a delight to the eye brilliant player and that is a sensational score 11 points 40 percent from the field in this one starting to see more minutes down the stretch and we get closer and closer to closing our conference play uh, getting more recognition and more opportunity on the floor yeah, more time as well Gizawi in possession here and the pressure from Culpepper uh, oh they've given the ball away Patrick Gardner is picked up by uh, Culpepper senior drops it into the path well there's a traveling call I'm afraid pass wasn't good to Dave Miller Jr they kind of rushed it didn't they well it was the ball pressure the two defenders on Culpepper he had to get the ball well he got the ball away to Miller Jr it's not in the ideal position couldn't hold the pass and a rice foul in his face, but acknowledgement to his teammate for the connection. Yeah, but sometimes you either gotta, I think Karim Nesbo's going, Culpepper should have gone home alone, but uh, not the case. It's uh, Patrick Gardner who gave away the, the pass. He'll try and rectify that as he tries to go for points. He's been scoring points from that little middle section every single time. Sensational touch. Well, we haven't seen too much of his work inside the paint. This is the first game where he's really been allowed to operate. Whoa, another big score going in. But uh, Gardner up to 12 points, third player into double figures. Amin as well up to 11, or Abby with 13. Uh, he's uh, unlocked a little bit inside the paint, and I think they're going to keep going back to him. Well, I would if I was them. <laughs> That's nicely done. Mitchell Jr. takes a stunning pass from Gardner and into the basket it goes great dunk great finish 49 57 they're moving away here's one of those late third quarter runs from Alali and they just unlock the defense a hard foul as Cole Pepper goes down yeah he uh, kind of went down at the angle you can see where he turned turned up and he's down there he banged his head a little bit I hope it was on the on the protection around the base of the basket as we see the uh, the replay dunk Mitchell jr. screaming loud and what a wonderful pass that was, great vision. Well, having a look at Maluash on the finish and almost a statement to say, I got you, young man. <laughs> no, it's whatever you can do, I can try and do better. No, he did, he, that was fantastic. Top quality. Uh, back in possession with Rembert. Needs to get points, and that doesn't fall. Maluash can't get the rebound. 
Gardner does well to rip the ball away and make it safe. Comes out to Amin. Amin swings it around. Great opportunity. Dame Miller Jr. Watch out for Maloash. It's going up for a three-pointer. That is brilliant. That is from Cole Pepper because he had other options. Everybody closing in inside the paint, leaving Carl Pepper alone, and he makes the shot, then important shot, because it now brings a scoring run of Alali to an end. And that, well, it's just uh, the attempt is picked up by uh, Dane Miller Jr. They go again, and as he said, you know, a, a run is a run, but when the run comes to an end, things can happen, and uh, he's unable to get the points there, Dane Miller Jr. Saw that uh, rich vein of form at that one point, Earlier in the game, hasn't managed to get it back. Pa Patrick Gardner made safe there by Malawash. Rembert, another stale phase of play. This time it's Rembert who doesn't get his range on that occasion. Goes high, goes high over the top. No one's going to have that. Mitchell Jr. puts his hands up and says, My fault, shouldn't have really done that. I risked the pass and it, it resulted in a turnover. And we we'll talk a little bit about Rim Bear and his struggles from the three point line. He continues to try and pull it, but 14% in the first three games. Uh, most teams will be happy to see him pull up for that shot. Rim Bear under a little bit of pressure from Gizawi. The ball comes out as Bashir has come on. Bashir for three. It's a shot that doesn't fall. That would have made it two, separating the two teams here. And uh, Amin going around the back into the corner. Chuck that wide blind pass from Mitchell Jr. Gizawi waits, waits, waits. Smartly gives himself and his teammates a bit of time. Reorganize themselves. Gizawi, oh, he's just losing possession there, but he will get the ball back. A little bit lucky there. Well, he got caught again, just trying to get inside the paint, and then indecisive, and the ball just slides out of his hands. Now, he'll head to the bench, and in comes Lions. Yeah, no change for Karim Nesbar, just uh, making sure that everybody knows what they've got to do. Bashir's on the floor, of course, who's bringing that feisty attitude. Uh, which is definitely something that they need at this time in the game. Oh, he's gone up again, and it's a stunning score there. Gardner up to 14 points with the mid-range two. Why well, is definitely in his flow is Patrick Gardner. Everything he touches turns to gold and has helped spark this lead, this seven-point lead for Alali late in the third. But this is okay, see, Karim Nesbar knows that, okay, that's, uh, we started to get back in, but we missed a couple of our attacking points. They've allowed Alali to just stretch their lead a little bit again and, and, and just get a seven point difference. The fact is he can say, right guys, let's just fix this. Let's sort this out because there's something that's not working. Mix up the strategy and the game tactics. And for a team that scores a lot, that takes a lot of three point shots, they have 44 points in the paint in this one and predominantly Arabi and Gardner there with their third 14 and 13 points respectively Amin has also chipped in, in third player in double digits on the other side come on Malawash has got a double double 16 and 11 6 of 12 it's been tough going inside the paint lots of defense being thrown his way and Miller Jr 3 of 10 for his 10 and so much basketball to be played as well 148 left in this third quarter uh, Tactically, what what would you do if you were carrying Nesba? What kind of tactics would you use? Do you is, are there players that you need to change? We talked about Rembrandt and how he links up so well with Malawash. You know, don't you think it's time that Dane Miller just goes on one of those runs to sort of you know spark that that intrigue and you know that that, that fight back that we've seen in the first half? You try to exploit matchups, but these teams match up so well on the floor. It's, it's a chance to just try and run different actions, and you called it, and Dave Miller Jr. are going to try to work right or hit against Gardner. And here's the score for Dave Miller Jr. Key two points. 12 points now for Miller Jr. You know, he's causing... He's, he's attracting a lot of attention when he goes on those runs. They've got to mix it up a little bit. Malawash will now be the player that they need to go to. Here he is, Lions, shot clock down to six. He had too much time and space for him, run just didn't shut him out. They have so many different weapons who can be composed under pressure. This time, Lions makes shot from the top of the key. Seven-point lead, Rembrandt down into the, into the hands of this man, Dane Miller Jr. Dane Miller Jr. goes on a wonder. Little swivel turn. He's very fast, but he doesn't get his shot on that occasion. 
fall in the right place. Patrick Gardner goes for a big three for Gardner. Well, they punish the slow return from Dave Miller Jr. Gardner left alone, and now it's third point explode and third quarter explosion from Gardner takes him to 17. And they're up to a 10 point lead, and that's the concerning element. 31 seconds left, and a differential of about uh, 19. Let's see where they're going with this. Got to score points. Got to get four points left on the clock. They're going to shut out Malawash. It does come off. Uh, it's a foul by Orabi on Malawash. He'll go to the free throw line. Second foul on Orabi. Fourth team foul for Al Ali. Malawash three fouls, which uh, is the highest tally tonight so far. It's the kind of play you really want to make sure that he's uh, not going into the fourth quarter with a fourth. I uh, want to keep him on the floor here. He will be very aware of his foul situation as well. 17 points. As a 29-point game already against Bangi in conference play. Good scoring from, from the line there for Malawash. Eight points. And Alali in possession. This third period critical for the Giants of Egypt. representatives of this wonderful country that we've been privileged to come and visit for the past three years the ball flung out to arabi arabi for a rare big three-pointer shot clock down to zero can't go for that i'm afraid lion says no uh, it doesn't matter it's the end of the quarter and at 56 64 and an eight-point lead for uh, alali well, it was great awareness from Morabi to get to get the shot off just before the game clock expired and try to see if they can't just extend the lead going into the third. But El Ali doing what they do in the third quarter, compiling a lead. Take a break. We'll be back for the fourth quarter. Well, now the, the coaches have talks with their players. It's time for them to get back on the court. First of all, let's take a look at the game summary. 48% for Al Ali as they continue to find ways of executing with excellence. 15 assists to the seven of the City Oilers. And one thing they have done well is dominate the boards. Plus 10 in favor of Al Ali. Struggles from the three point line. They have not found their range. We've had a couple of wide open looks, but just don't have the touch there. And sometimes it goes that way on the basketball court. And it's about adapting and adjusting. And they've done just enough to make sure that they nudge ahead against this determined City Oilers outfit. 30 points off the bench for Alali, which gives you an idea and just four for the City Oilers. So you understand exactly <laughs> what this team is all about. Depth and the ability to adjust on the floor. It is the Oilers who uh, get this final quarter going. Bashir with a mid-range two. Oh, it's rolled out. That was super close. But uh, it's not good enough to put the points on the board and make it a six-point game. This is where Alali is super dangerous. Gardner, Gardner, dodging, just getting himself clear of danger. Back into the hands of Lions. Lions got Keju as a decoy. Oh, that is just stupendously good. Well, we talk about clutch, and they are guys who just step up the ability to make shots under pressure. Lions has proved to be one of them. Rambert. Nasser putting a bit of pressure on Rembert. He's running out of space down in the corner. Needs to find somebody. Dane Miller Jr. Bashir for three. And that is a great shot from Bashir. It means the world to him. And I think Karim Nesbao will appreciate that as well. A planned play. Bashir wide open and he makes the shot. Lions closely monitored. So you see that players on the floor here. One of them being this man, amen, amen. Trying to hold off Tony Gileva. Does really well, doesn't get a shot, and it's been picked up at the back. Good opportunity here for the Oilers to try and go on one of those moves. Is Dane Miller Jr. Trying to wiggle past everybody. Floating one over the shot, that's a fantastic score. A smiling assassin runs away, knows that those points were vital. Right, he's playing with determination and a little bit more pep in his step today, Dane Miller Jr., and it's paying dividends on the score sheet. But they trail by five, and there's still a lot of basketball to be played. Eight minutes to go. Amen. Amen. 
Waits, waits. Tony Drilleva just keeping him at bay. Allowing the shot clock to go down to three. That doesn't fall. Made safe. Whoa, Malawash getting it down. Dave Miller Jr. Dave Miller Jr. Oh, he tries to get the ball back to Malawash. Malawash has the ball touched by Kedju. It's gone back into the hands of Alali. Lions running around, arcs around. Patrick Gardner, Gardner for three. Gardner goes again. Oh, goaltending points for count. Alali up for another two. Well, trying to be too generous on their play, Dave Miller Jr. I think he should have just gone for the finish, trying to find Malawash. And the ball gets turned over. Gardner. 19 points and he is the go-to guy for Al Ali. Strong statement play from Gardner. Just look at that. There's the uh, the touch. Points go up on the scoreboard regardless. Seven points. 737. Gardner makes way. And uh so does Elke. Dane Miller Jr. Yeah, absolutely. He had a little bit of a limp. He's just limped back over onto the bench there, but I think that is, he's okay. But uh, they want to take a look. You've got the medical staff just uh, having a little look at the moment, Dane Miller's ankle. Um, Rembe, meanwhile, here, you've got a big guy on the court with uh, Malawash, and uh, El Gendi's come on. That's a good, good test of strength, but they need to get those points, the City Oilers. They need to keep it close. Can't let the game extend out above three possessions so scores and execution important malawash great rebounds making that safe rembe takes it up court seven minutes to go rembe back out to bashir bashir goes over the top and uh there is contact in bashir so mitchell jr and he's gone for a three-point shot so he'll celebrate by going to the free throw line and gets a few shots to try and reduce the arrears. The yeah, extended left elbow just outside three-point line is where Bashir likes to pull the shot from and this time just laid on the cover there Tony Mitchell Jr. he'll pick up a foul. That's his third. 14 points in their last outing against and he also had nine rebounds. That's his best offensive showing in the conference so far. 83% from the free throw line. He's played professional basketball in Kosovo, Croatia, the Adriatic League, Hungary, and Bosnia. He's, he's as international as you, kid. A little bit more. Just a little bit more. Not much, <laughs> just a little bit. Cole Pepper Senior about to come back on. Rembe is going to make way as Bashir continues to try and chop down that lead from the free throw line. 6.58 on the clock. Still lots of basketball to be played. City Oilers doing a sterling job in not allowing our lead to be racing away like they do so often. This is the third. So six, Lions in possession. Teller Mitchell Jr. to race down into the corner. El Gendi with that deceiving way that he plays. That's a big long range shot that's not fallen Bashir into the hands of Culpepper Senior. The safe hands normally. Malawash, what a pass. And that might be City Oilers who get possession. Great work there from Lions. O almost too good a pass from Carl Pepper. Just trying to anticipate the, the turn and the seal from Malawash, but he gets ahead of the play uh, just a bit. Now it's going to be a phone call for Bashir, I think, on uh, El Gendi. Well, Bashir called on the contact. Second foul, first team foul. Hasn't spent as much time on the court as we usually see him, El Gendi, but uh, every time that he does come on, we know that he's super operational and awkward to play against at both ends. Oh, Kedju, Kedju, the foot was over the line, and that's frustrating. Fourteenth turnover for Al Ali, and that's four above the average they've averaged just about 10 that's the lowest number in the basketball africa league they've taken really good care of the ball but it also speaks to how good the defense has been from the city oilers in this one i think that was actually a foul it's keju picked up the foul there's just a little bit of contact so he's on three now 
look at that. There's the uh, left arm on Bashir. Culpepper puts it up for Malouas, gets over the man and dunks the ball. That's a statement in itself. Malouas. Great find that from Culpepper. And again, that's like how you go up to 20 points for command, Malouas. Dropped into the path of Keju. Does really well to stay away from the long wings of that big player from South Sudan, Malouas. Culpepper Senior around the outside. He had something different. Dave Miller Jr. Is he going to go on a move? Tries to turn El Gendi. Chucks it out to Malawas. Malawas for three! Big buckets, big time for that man, Malawas. And there's definitely a connection between Miller and Malawas. they looking to find each other on the floor. Malawas, big time shot making. You can say that about any of the players in this Cape, uh, in this City Oilers team. It's 67 70, traveling call. Gendi, El Gendi. Well, is there going to be a timeout called by Coach Julbe? I'm just keeping an eye on him. And another look at the catch and the finish. He got up super high on that one. Yeah, but he doesn't, you know, it's as if Mitchell Jr. was invisible. Well, he tried to get it, but Malawa said, not this time. I'll take that. Cold Pepper. Cold Pepper, mid range two. That's a great score. It's a one point game with five minutes remaining. Another tight tussle here, just like the last one. Well, picking up a, a scoring run at the right time, and they bring it back within one point. Came on. Bring it on. Lions, Keju, Keju. Draws some attention from Opong. And it's a timeout that's been called 69-72. Intriguing. Very interesting, and I think that with this three-point tally, you know, separating these two teams, we're in a very interesting place because, honestly, now the City Oilers can push, push in the last five. We'll take a break. Five, well, 4.47 left to play, 69.72 here in Cairo. This is a very intriguing little scenario cue. It's game on entirely as a three-point game can go absolutely anywhere, and, and that shot by Keju almost looked intentional to try and pick up the rebound. Well, they don't score from that. Trilaba, Culpepper Senior. Malawash, Malawash waits. Ah, it's a frustrating call going against Culpepper Senior there. Well, he gets called for the clear route. And on a possession where you need to score and, and just keep it a little bit close, he gets right into Nasser and he clears out clearly and the call is made. Outstretched left arm. Lions. Keju. Flung into the path of Keju. It's not going to count, though. Yeah, basket waved off, and the illegal screen is called on Keju as he turns inside. These are the little things that can prevent them from getting what they want. It's one of those scenarios where you've got to seize your opportunities. You see the battle happening inside the hard pick, and the the finish from Keju. A technical oh, tackle for Lions. Lions has got a word or two to say to the refs, and Carl Pepper goes up, and he he doesn't make the free throw. Uh, but they will get possession. It's still important. These these scores important, especially given the context of the game. Tony Trilaba will have the ball in his hands. Cole Pepper Senior. Well, Malawash, biggest guy on the court, they need to take advantage. Cole Pepper gets it back. Three point shot for Malawash that doesn't go and level the scores at 72 each. It's been picked up by Lions. Lions, Keju, Nasser Mitchell Jr. Elgendi. Shot, well, they're 357. Shot clock down to nine. Keju. Been closely marked there by Malawash. He goes for it finally. Flung out. Oh, there's a buzzer beater for Mitchell Jr. 
massive Mitchell Jr. shot. You know their ability to make shots under pressure, and they keep on proving it time and time again. Big shot by Mitchell. Cole Pepper Sr. Dane Miller Jr. Shot clock down to five. O'Pong does really well. Mid range two. Unable to get the score. Kedju makes his save. Picked up by Mitchell Jr. He's being surrounded. Surrounded big time. Still manages to muscle the ball away. Kedju, they're using the clock smartly now. Six points the advantage. Lions. No, surely not. O'Pong, lovely little touch, and there's contact on the back of the head of Nasser. Got to win the one-on-one the -on -one battles here, and that foul by Opong to keep the possession for Al Ali. Picks up his third, personal is the fourth team foul. Four years, and there's some breathing room for Al Ali. They've always put themselves into that position. They've always managed to just get away and, and just suss out how to deal with these tense situations because they're made to do that. Al Ali, defending champions, Lions, Mitchell Jr. right through the middle, and he doesn't get the points, but there is contact on Mitchell Jr. And I'm just worried that it might be Malawash, and it is. It's his fourth. And uh, Mitchell, when he attacks it, and you see mid it, thought about the dunk, sells the dunk, but then tries to go around. And that's where Malawash gets, gets caught in having to make a decision. Makes the decision late, and he picks up the foul. That's his fourth. Mitchell Jr. Into double figures he goes. And he'll be the fourth player to reach Double digits. So experienced, 17 countries, six continents, has played basketball on a 34-year-old guard. Four. Such big, man. big points there for the swingman. Very well played, 69-77. Got to get points back. Culpepper Senior goes right through. That is brilliant. That's a great score for Culpepper Senior. Now he goes to the free throw line and he needs to get the extra one. Well, they needed the score, and that was a, a timely make. He splits the defense, goes up against two defenders, and gets the roll, the shooter's roll, and the two. It's interesting because uh, both, both teams are on five team fouls now. Lane. Coach Chilby's not even had a single timeout in this first quarter. Gonna use them all down the stretch if needed. Only one timeout used by Coach Karim Nesba. A reprieve though for Carl Pepper. Does it well. Good score there. It's a five-point game. Oh, they've given the ball away. This is uh, an opportunity. Miller Jr. Carl Pepper. Big three. Big three. Cole Pepper hits the three and it's a two-point game with 224. They get the ball back again. Dane Miller Jr. Oh, he can't score from that. And it's been smuggled out of his hands by Mitchell Jr. Madness here, Q. Well, they they forced turnovers. Can't be unbelievably both turnovers happening on the baseline. And they've got a chance now to take the lead potentially or draw level. Gotta get points. Cole Pepper, Cole Pepper doesn't manage to get it. Oh, the tip in! The two points are good. Wow, big time play from Malawash, big time play from the Oilers. They have made defense get them back in this one and they tie it up at 77. This is just frenetic, look at that. Well, that is massive, the tip in, needed to get their first. It was, I think it was Dane Miller Jr. It was, yeah. It looked like Malawash. But Definitely the left hand of Dane Miller Jr. Getting the touch, in it goes. <laughs> Love it. Three players got a touch on, but it is that man, Miller Jr., hand in the air, and he is up to 16. His best offensive performance so far for the Oilers in this conference. This is just sensational. We're loving this. Today has been a day where we've seen tight, tantalizingly close battles, 
on the floor that have provided all of the fans here and all of you who are watching around the world something extra special. And again, I'm going to go back to when you get the opportunity to play a team twice. You start to see where you can close up and how to improve your performance. And every encounter in the second round, dare I say, it will be of this nature because these are some quality teams going at each other. Hey, listen, you know, it's, it's exactly that. You get the chance to suss out the systems and understand the players. They've done a brilliant job, all level, 77 points apiece. And we've got less than two minutes to play here in Cairo. Where's this going? We don't know. Mitchell Jr., ball in hand. El Gendi into the path of Gardner. El Gendi for three. Big shot, doesn't fall. Picked up by Rumba. Rumba's got Cole Pepper Senior just around him. Doesn't manage to get it. Oh! And the layup is fantastic. Wonderfully picked up and put in there by Kaman. And this time it is Kaman Malawash on the second chance point. They take the lead. 131 left to play. Look at Karim Nesba, active, very vocal. El Gendi picks it up. Look at the defensive game. Lots of time, lots of space. Big three, baby! And oh my! They move a point ahead. Dangerous on the corner three, so much time and space, and it takes a lot of composure to make that shot under pressure. Don't leave him there on him by himself. Oh, he's been stolen. Eamon picks it up. Malawash is there. Can't commit the foul. If he does, he's off. And it's Cole Pepper committing the foul. Eamon was weighing and assessing his options after the good work, individual work on, on the defensive end. And here, the pass from Malgindi. Go, Nothing but go. net. <laughs> Lots of confidence and an important make for Anali and Amin. 79-80. Oh, they've been going to the free throw line. One zero six left to play. The first one is good. Under pressure like this, this is when stats don't matter. It's just got to compose and make. Amen, just already getting his players into position for the next play because he just knows that that's what you've got to look at, which is brilliant. Such a great professional, such a great player, great basketball mind. Amen, to make it a three point lead. 15 and 8. Doesn't get it. Made safe by Malawash. Here they go. Two points separating these two teams. Rembert. Rembert around the outside. Puts it into the pass. Oh, it's a great score. And he gets the foul. Cole Pepper Senior is absolutely on fire. Ghosts in down the baseline queue and then draws attention. Just some great execution again. Rembert with the recognition. Sees Cole Pepper cutting on the base. Up over Gardner. And that's a really skillful, tough make. How do you get that in there? I don't know, I don't know. I look at his body position when he's like going around. I mean, you know, that is remarkable. We're all level. And this is Cole Pepper Senior to put them ahead. Oh, it goes in as well. Now it's City Oilers who are trying to get their defensive system back in position. Got 53 seconds remaining. Picked up by Lions. Mitchell Jr. Lions. El Gendi wants the ball. Picks it up. Cole Pepper Senior's there. Opon, Opon gets his hands on it. The battle. Oh, that nearly went in. They've done it defensively. Pick the ball up. Alali and the pressure. What great work on the defensive end to secure that basketball. 28, 28 seconds remaining. Rembert. Got a one point lead. We'll leave using the clock. Rembert. Back out to Cole Pepper Senior. Needs to get points from this. They go up, it's a big long wing shot. Oh, it just goes out of play. And that wasn't the right call, was it? There's been a timeout that's called 12.3 seconds remaining. Definitely not the execution they wanted on that. Thought when he saw Cole Pepper come out, he was looking to get the ISO, looking to create, and he got into a little bit of trouble. Rembert couldn't bail him out. Uh, that shot, less than ideal, but they still do hold the lead. They still can shape their own destiny with some good work on the defensive end. Yeah, it's uh, it's the Alali coach, Coach Tulbe, who's called the timeout. And uh, to be honest with you, this is this is game time. This is where it comes down. This is 
this is where it's going to be finalised, this whole game, and whether or not Alali can actually win this or not, or whether City Oilers are going to win. Well, 27-16, and you have a look, Malawash has been great. 19-8 for Gardner, 15-8 for Amin. Miller Jr. is 14-4-4, four and, four. and it's that man, Culpepper, 20 points, 3 rebounds, 3 assists, but he's got to come to the 4 down the stretch. It's going to be defense. The execution from Al Ali will be sound. They have some big-time shot makers. Yeah, they do. I don't know where it's going to go. When I see this Al Ali team, you know it can go anywhere. Orabi's obviously come on. Orabi on Gardner, Gendi, Lions, and I mean... The chosen five. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bagendi, watch out Bagendi. He's the ghost who can ghost in from the side. Lions, last play. Seven seconds left to play. Lions goes for it. Lions flings it out wide. Amin has it. Tries to go for the shot. The shot. Does it go? No, it doesn't. It's made safe. This is incredible. They've done it. They celebrate. The City Oilers have shaken up. The local team, Alali, they've got themselves their first win, their first win, and not against just anybody, but the defending champions. What a victory. They hold on. That is a, some absorbing, intricate, fascinating battle cue. What a great way for the Sydney Oilers to pick up a win. Well, they show character and composure from the start. And a turn up for the books for sure as the City Oilers handed defeat to the defending champions and the home team Al Ali and they hand them only their second loss ever in the Basketball Africa League. Lost against Petro uh, de Luanda last year. They've now lost against the City Oilers and Karim Nesbar, give him credit. He has worked his wizardry to get his team into a position where they can battle. I don't know how he's done it, but he's done such a brilliant job because it hasn't been easy. And he's done something fantastic because what these players have done is just extraordinary tonight. It was a combined team effort, but you really have to, 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 to look at the numbers from Cole Pepper Jr. and Miller Jr. They were they added extra pieces to the performance around Kaman Maluash. Patrick Gardner was big inside the paint with 19 and 8. Let's hear from the the double double man, Kaman Maluash. What an amazing win tonight! How are you feeling? It feels great, man. It feels great, especially after losing the first three games. It feels great that we're back and we're back in it right now and we're still alive. You guys were haven't won a game. You are 0-3, you play probably probably the best team in this conference. How bad, how badly did you want this win? We wanted it so bad because we are doing it back for the people home. Because it reached a certain moment and we had to put pride in and put everything aside. And put everything aside and play together. And that's what we did. Tonight, 27 points, 16 rebounds, another double double. We've seen your progression all through the years. Is this the new Cayman? Uh, I won't say this is the new me because I'm still developing. And uh, I still got a lot of stuff to work on, and I'll do that always and keep on getting better. Thank you very much, and congratulations, Kevin. Come on, Malawash, still developing. <laughs> he's 17. It's just brilliant, isn't it? Absolutely ex exceptional what he's done and how he's chipped in to enable the City Oilers get their first win. They haven't just done it in style, they've done it with verve and swagger. Wow, what a fantastic performance from the City Oilers. And even if you look at the stats, the one place where Al Ali struggled was the three-point line. They just could not find joy from the interior. I mean, from the exterior, they, they tried to attack the paint and did so. But when it came down to it, shot making, especially in the fourth quarter, the performance from Culpepper taking responsibility under pressure. D Dane Miller Jr. and Kamal Maluwash, they combined, and it was a triple threat as far as the City Oilers were concerned. And what was most important in the scoreline, 82-81.